Assalamualaikum and welcome to Perspective. Uh, we'll be talking, of course, about Burhan Wani's, uh, today is uh, Burhan Wani's death anniversary. Um, Kashmiri's struggle for independence, we've also seen the resilience with which Kashmiris have fought after uh, the martyrdom of Burhan Wani. Um, and of course, uh, the Prime Minister also tweeted about it when he said that the struggle for the Kashmiris um, has known uh, the kind of resilience after his death. Uh, like never before. Also, we'll be talking about Pakistan's consistent support for the Kashmiri cause, um, our unwavering support and uh, our uh, resolve to stand by Kashmiris in their struggle uh, throughout. Um, all of that today um, on Perspective. I have with me Dr. Awes bin Vasi, who's a Kashmiri leader. Thank you for joining us today. I also have with me Altaf Hussain Wani, <coughs> who is uh, leader Kashmir KIIR. Thank you for being with us. And Ali Raza Sayyid, who's chairman Kashmir Council EU. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Dr. Wes, like I said, you know, as far as uh, Burhan, after Burhan Bani's death, we've seen uh, the Kashmiris fortitude, their resilience pick up like never before. Um, you know, it has had a counter effect from what, of course, the Indians intended. Uh, you know, by this kind of merciless, uh, his martyrdom is something that, you know, of course, looks we look back on every year, we uh, reflect on the Kashmiri struggle. But overall, um, how do you look at things now? And, you know, the way the world sees the Kashmiri cause at this time, has it left a dent at all in the overall sentiment for Kashmiris internationally? How do you look at it? This uh, uh, Buran Wani's uh, martyrdom in 2016, 8th of July, mm. that is a very significant milestone in the history of Kashmiri resistance because uh, uh, India always levels allegations that uh, this movement, Kashmiri movement, is, uh, uh, has external support and Pakistan is uh, extend, ex extending its uh, military support to that uh, uh, struggle. But uh, this uh, milestone, uh, 2016, Buran Wani's martyrdom, is connected with the movement of Amarnath agitation, which took place in 2008. After that, we witnessed uh, three consecutive years, 2008, 2009, and 2010, right. peaceful indigenous uh, uh, Kashmiri movement. And after, the, after, after some years, we have seen that this uh, <coughs> Uh, this uh, martyrdom uh, took place of Buran Wani's young Kashmiri leader. And after that, we also uh, witnessed uh, uh, intifada uh, in Kashmiri struggle, followed by uh, Kashmiri youth, mm. and uh, especially the people uh, who got inspiration uh, from this uh, martyrdom is uh, their youth. And they are not commoners, they are uh, highly educated, uh, PhD doctors, engineers, professors, professionals, they join uh, armed struggle because uh, all of the options uh, were not available and they have been mm. pushed to the wall. Mm. And so, so this is, in this way, this is important that mm. indigenous and peaceful dimension for the first time has been brought to the, uh, uh, to, uh, to the limelight. Okay. Second part of question that you asked about the world's response. Mm. Unfortunately, the desirable response we could not get so far. But we cannot simply brush aside that there is no response. There mm. is a response that okay. we have seen, for example, in international publications for the first time. So you're after, saying after that there is, there is a slow and gradual, perhaps, change yes, we in have, the we, world we have, sentiment. We have seen stories in New York Times, <coughs> in Los Angeles Times, in Washington Post and international credible publications we have seen. Similarly, we have also seen very important significant reports by United Nations Human Rights Council and other human rights organizations. We have also uh, seen statements from uh, Indian uh, representative of Indian society, Indian society mm -hmm. civil society. And another thing that is, uh, that is very important is that there was an intellectual uh, literary explosion after this intifada. Okay. People have been writing a lot, you know, fiction, they have been writing, hmm. they have been writing non-fiction. And even Indian, uh, you know, within uh, Indian authors also, we've seen, you know, their own intelligentsia, protest. Y like yes, for the... Let me 
go to Altaf Hussain uh, Wani Sahib. Ji, Altaf Sahib, we've been, you know, I hope you've been following. We've been talking about the struggle against the Kashmiri cause, and I think we've spoken on this before also, in terms of the change overall in the world's sentiment. And, uh, you know, Dr. West agrees. He was saying that there is an overall thawing um, as far as the world at large is concerned. We've seen a change as far as in publications, the way that it is, it is being written about the Kashmiri cause. Do you agree? Yeah, totally. I agree with Dr. Vasi. The way uh, after the martyrdom of Burhan Muzaffar Wani, uh, the Kashmiri people, the way people of Kashmir in general reacted to that martyrdom, and then the reaction from the Indian armed forces, the way India used the excessive force, and then use ballot scans on the protesters in Kashmir. We have seen a huge reports from the International Civil Society. If you remember uh, the Physician for Human Rights an organization in Washington, D.C., they, uh, they issued a report on the uh, blind eyes of Kashmir and similarly Washington Post, New York Times uh, and other international uh, newspapers publish stories on this. And also, as Dr. Vasi said, we have seen the reports from the Human Rights Commissioner's Office, and that post specifically mentions uh, the martyrdom of Burhan Muzaffarwani, and it is from 2016 to 18, in the range of two years, what happened in Kashmir, though it gives reference to the past ex ex excesses which uh, Indian occupation forces are uh, responsible in, in occupied Kashmir me like that of Purnan Posh Bora and other massacres in Kashmir. But we have seen after Burhan Wani's uh, martyrdom, we saw uh, the, the way the Kashmiri uh, educated youth reacted uh, to this moment, the way they uh, supported the cause Burhan Wani pursued and they uh, got involved in that armed struggle. And we have seen then uh, lots of pieces were written at the international level that this is not an, uh, the moment which is sponsored by anywhere. It is a moment, indigenous moment of people of Kashmir. And we've seen the former special about the late, uh, 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 late uh, lawyer of Pakistan who was special reporter of uh, the freedom of expressions. Uh, she was in India at that mm. time and fortunately in Kashmir for a conference. Uh, when she came back, she spoke in an event in Islamabad that uh, now for the first time I've seen in Kashmir, I was in Kashmir, that people of Kashmir said that now we have our own leader, that is Burhan Muzaffarwani. And this moment is totally indigenous, whatever India is uh, talking about it, it is a uh, false mm -hmm. narrative of India. And this narrative was also followed by the international press and, and even the UN's human rights systems. So there was a huge change in this uh, moment after Burhan Muzaffarwani's martyrdom, and he was fortunate enough, and this moment was fortunate enough that it was, it was age of information technology, we had uh, mm. social media and all this, so the news uh, flowed all over the world, and uh, we got uh, a lot of response at the international level. Right, let me let me go to Ali Raza Sayyid ji. Um, Ali Raza, <clears throat> as far as agreement on uh, the response is concerned, um, you agree as what about the, within the EU particularly since you are uh, chairman Kashmir Council EU um, overall what have you felt as far as their sentiment is concerned as far as commemorating of course uh, you know looking back on the you know today as far as the death anniversary of uh, Burhan Wani is concerned how do you look at the way things are unfolding at this time particularly in the EU for example thank you very much um, I think uh, there is uh, there is a lot lot of change after the martyrdom of uh, Burhan Wani on the 8th of July 2016. Uh, you know, if you can see that uh, since uh, 8th of July 2016, 1,697 Kashmiris are martyred, hmm. and this shows that uh, what Modi wanted to 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 do was uh, that uh, killing the Kashmiri leaders uh, as they have uh, failed before uh, from 1984 uh, up mm. to now uh, they have hanged uh, Makul Bhatt they hanged the Afzal Guru and they mm. put in jail all the Kashmiri leadership but the resistance continued and it shows that this resistant movement is indigenous. It is from the heart of the people, from the Kashmir 
uh, itself. It, uh, India narrative says that it, it is uh, supported by the external forces. No, but the uh, the international. That's good. That's good. That's good. But in terms of the reaction overall, you're saying that it, it things have things did uh, you know change after the martyrdom of uh, Burhan Wani. Um, and the way that he was, of course, martyred and, and the kind of struggle that we've seen um, consistently as far as the Kashmiris are concerned. In, uh, in, in the mindset of uh, European uh, institutions, mm. European uh, public, and mm. that's why mm. there are a lot of uh, uh, international media, European media is talking about uh, uh, Kashmir since Burhan Wani's uh, martyrdom. And uh, subsequently, afterwards, what happens up to now? It is uh, uh, before it was not uh, it was not reported as they are reporting now. And I think the change is coming. But unfortunately, uh, the the world scenario is also uh, the world is uh, occupied in uh, COVID, and then it's the Ukraine crisis. But the European Union, uh, if you see, they have the research service, and mm. they they put a lot of uh, inputs in that for for the MEPs and for the mm. the next generation. What is happening in Kashmir and what what is the Kashmir issue? Normally, the Kashmir issue is the human rights issue, is the right of self determination issue, and that is. Uh, the people, they are starting to understand that Modi government is trying to uh, to suppress and to, uh, uh, as a fascist regime, whatever they, they have the opportunity in other part of the world, they, they have done with the communities. The same Modi's, Modi government is doing with the Kashmiris and with the uh, minorities in, in, in India. And right. I think... We have to we have to continue with the facts and figures, and uh, uh, I am I'm sure that the people of Europe will support and the European Union will come forward to support at the end for the people of Kashmir because the uh, what India is trying to portray is uh, false, and now uh, with the social media and with the uh, with the, with the, the journalism and in um, uh, civil society in India also, it, mm. it is uh, uh, it, it is raising the issue uh, of Kashmir and the Kashmiris will get their support and uh, the suffering of the people of Kashmir will end, uh, inshallah. Inshallah, Ji, uh, Doctor Wes, uh, you know your input on overall as far as. Uh, <clears throat> when we talk about, of course, we've seen that uh, the All Parties Hurriyat Conference also hold uh, different uh, protests. We've seen, you know, overall, all over the world, there have been protests, uh, particularly today, um, you know, co <clears throat> commemorating again and, uh, you know, on this occasion of the way that he was martyred. But overall, in terms of your opinion on the Kashmiri struggle, what are some of the areas you think perhaps you spoke about the intelligence, yeah, you spoke about the way that it is written. Perhaps that's an area that we can concentrate on more internationally. Yes, you're right. Uh, <coughs> the, first thing, the first part that all parties, Hurriyat Conference and other uh, organizations, yes. they are uh, uh, projecting this cause uh, for uh, decades at uh, international forums. And this is not confined to only this conglomerate. There are mm. many other organizations they are mm. also working, many mm. individuals they are also working it. Mm. Uh, the important areas which uh, warrant our attention mm. are, number one is, uh, which I oft repeat and we reiterate uh, mm. here, that is uh, our uh, uh, legal uh, discourse, okay. legal dimension of that. Uh, we have fortunately uh, very uh, you know, advantageous position. We are at a vantage point legally. But have we exploded but, enough? In but your we have started. Mm. But uh, unfortunately, <coughs> our approach has been that we are more, you know, towards this uh, damage control approach instead okay. of having foresight. And we try to do things with the benefit of hindsight instead of foresight. So we need to look, you know, look with the benefit of foresight, look ahead. 
what's going to happen you know in the next 10 years next 15 years and based on that we need to frame because our policy because as far no, as the kashmiri cause is concerned we saw that you know this government pick it up immediately one of the first things that they spoke about and overall there has been agreement on the kashmiri cause across the board yes and yes. our support for it hmm. as a country as hmm. as muslim brethren all of that yes you're right you know this this uh, uh, first part uh, mm. i i'll continue from the Gee. suggestions that you were asking Gee. the second thing that we need to do is as uh, uh, ali raza sahab was talking about uh, you know with uh, reference to work in europe we need to work in multiple languages mm. of course english is an international lingua franca right. but in french german mm. you know portuguese or other influential languages we need to produce literature <coughs> digital literature as well as written literature and that need to be projected so we we don't need to uh, confine only one language and then we need to uh, project it that is number 2 which i think that we have to do that okay. the third thing is that the program that we are holding is that mm. we have already discussed vani sahab has also also highlighted that okay. dimension that the indigenous and peaceful face of the movement <coughs> that mm. needs to be highlighted okay and uh, so that uh, no international organization uh, and india um, you know couldn't uh, do propaganda uh, against uh, this uh, peaceful and indigenous movement i think that needs to be projected second third thing that uh, we should do is that uh, which uh, we call that stories of kashmiris by kashmiris you okay. know kashmiris they are victims hmm. so that highlighting those uh, highlighting yeah. those hmm. the stories the narratives told by the kashmiris not any third party okay. you know third party they can do that uh, they can amplify they can substantiate that effort hmm. they can multiply but, nothing, but like the thing is that the people the, for example right. uh, youth uh, children <coughs> uh, you know young youngsters then women so they need to uh you know be at the forefront and they have to tell their stories that Gee, i think uh, that's uh, you know you can can you add to this as far as multilingual of approach i think which is uh, something very uh, apt that dr wes talks about he says that you know we don't we don't need to confine ourselves to english and and our approach uh, towards getting the kind of publications out writings out on kashmiris and their sufferings should be multilingual it should also um, you know be uh, about Kashmiris perhaps highlighting their own stories. We also saw media ban happen. We've also seen, you know, the way that, and I think we've discussed this before, the way that uh, allowing uh, people into uh, occupied Kashmir as an issue, getting giving them the kind of access that is needed to see things, the way that they're happening, you know, that also is, has been an attempt uh, to control media. All of those things. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the way we we have been producing the literature uh, earlier, we were doing something in Arabic and other languages also. But mm. uh, lately, we were doing only in uh, English. Doctor Vasi is right that the literature we are producing the the facts and figures of the human rights violation in Kashmir and also the case of Kashmir, which is a case of <coughs> rights discrimination that is to be published in. Uh, different languages of the world so that the larger civil society in different countries could come to know about it and that thereby can we can galvanize the support and pressurize the governments who are there to make policies uh, in line with that uh, that's a very important thing and the indigenous character of the moment that is there and our kashmiri moment is always an indigenous moment unfortunately uh, india tried always to connect it with the international terrorism to brand it as a terrorist mm. moment to brand mm. it as an islamic moment and this and that mm. they try mm. to do it and uh, uh, unfortunately after 911 for a period of time they uh, were able to uh, sell this narrative at the international level but uh, fortunately it was uh, in EU, eu disinfo lab uh, discovered all those facts and figures how india uses the disinformation around the mm. globe against the kashmiri freedom struggle and all that uh, but uh, what we need to do at currently what we are doing and uh, what we need to pursue in future also is that mm. we should come with facts and figures on the ground mm. which we are doing at right level and to disseminate this information to the international audience <coughs> and here comes the role of our diaspora there comes the role of our university i want here to talk about that uh, particularly with ali raza saab let me let me come back to you ji um, uh, kashmiri diaspora the way that they have to be mobilized 
Um, do you think that there are other measures we can take? Uh, perhaps more organization is needed there. Uh, are you getting the kind of response overall? Uh, do you feel that there is the kind of response that is needed? Um, they can perhaps be more, do it can be more documented. We can have them uh, be more organized. What are your thoughts on this, um, uh, Ali Raza Sayed sir? Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Ovez, what he said uh, about the languages, that is very mm. important. So hmm. there are uh, in European Union we have 27 countries and only one country, uh, Ireland, is still uh, uh, English speaking. English. Otherwise, uh, there are different languages, and I I think it's uh, wise to have uh, uh, our uh, documentation and all the cases which are documented. They should be in different languages. That is first thing, and the second thing. The, the diaspora uh, who is working in uh, on uh, on Kashmir issue, they mm. should have the coordination uh, mm. with each other. That is very important, and we have to move forward with a narrative that it is a peaceful movement. It mm. is for the right, the for the basic rights. It is for the human rights, and it is for the right to self determination. And I think. I am hopeful that we can get the support. Even the, the Indians, they are trying to link the Kashmiri uh, freedom struggle to the terrorism and to others, unfortunately, after 9-11. But they are, they are failed, and they will be failed. And that's why you can see that uh, after 8 July 2016, they uh, martyred uh, Quran Wani and many more. And, they cannot uh, succeed in, in their uh, uh, their desire to occupy uh, state of uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Hmm. And that is, um, that Dr. Wes, I think one of the uh, let me let me uh, go to Dr. Wes. I will uh, come back to you. Uh, Dr. Wes, when we talk about, I think Ali Raza raises a very important point when he says that you know trying to mobilize them in terms of and you talked about the language and of course. Uh, that is the right way forward. But as far as organization is concerned, do you think we're organized enough? Um, lobbying perhaps is something that uh, we could move uh, more uh, aggressively towards? Because we've seen the way that the narrative that is painted, and I think this is what everybody agrees on by India, is you know trying to, to separate it uh, from a peaceful struggle for an independent land. Um, you know, not make it about uh, just about, uh, you know, about uh, their own domestic issue, which is how they paint it. Not, you know, they want to, of course, separate it from a human rights violation issue of that magnitude. So trying to change that narrative, do you think we're moving towards that? What are the measures we can take internationally to, to work towards that? And lobbying particularly, have we tried it enough? Is it something that we've done enough? What's your take on this? Okay, as far as the uh, Kashmiri diaspora is concerned, mm. uh, uh, Ali Raza Saab very rightly pointed out that there is a need to have a better, effective and efficient coordination mm. among the people who are working. This uh, uh, coordination unfortunately uh, lacked in the past mm. and now if we can have better coordination, I think we can improve to project our narrative internationally, number one. Okay. Second thing is that this United Nations resolutions and all the things that we uh, reiterate, we, uh, you know, we, we, say, we say most of the times, always repeat, this is important because mm. this is locus standing. We cannot you know, ignore it, we cannot brush it, brush mm. it aside, we cannot mm. put, put it into the back burner. Mm. But the point is, we need to strengthen our, uh, uh, you know, strengthen our narrative by uh, giving it a strong intellectual underpinning, strong intellectual foundation stone. For mm. example, from psychological point of view, okay. for example, there are issues of people over mm. there. Forty-five percent or fifty percent in one of the reports I was uh, saying they were people. They were suffering from psychological disorder. And this is what Post -traumatic you mean. You mean disorder. when people should talk about their own stories, the mm. way that it can be highlighted in the media. Is that what you mean? Exactly. You know, when we say that <coughs> we want to highlight the human angle or human uh, dimension of that, so this is something important from mm. uh, psychological point of view. Mm. From uh, sociological point of view, from anthropological point of view, mm. from literary point of view. Mm. So these are the areas that we need to, because only by doing it, we can highlight and we can 
we can sensitize the international community because these are the areas uh, if we can project it if we can uh, showcase it to the world community i think uh, they would be convinced and they would give attention to that if we generally talk about only the political dimension or territorial dimension mm. or geostrategic or geopolitical mm. which, which are um, of important, course they, they're important but, but, but this is a more human angle the, the, the more human angle that i think ought to be highlighted altaf sir do you agree as far as you know perhaps telling the stories by uh, the victims altaf sir can you hear me yeah yeah ji as uh, in terms of telling the stories themselves the kashmiris you know highlighting those and the media playing an effective role as far as um, you know bringing them out in the open is concerned of course humanizing element i think that that that's a very important point um, of course you know when we bring it to the attention of uh, the media brings it of course it, the efficacy of it the the sentiment of it um the effect overall when when the victims speak of their own tragedy um you know perhaps is something that that's going to have a more targeted effect on uh, people the world seeing uh, the cruelty the brutality uh, that is at this time in place in kashmir and happening consistently yeah that's true uh, unfortunately what happens to this point we always uh, try to bring the uh, victims forefront so that they could describe their own stories they could uh, speak themselves about their sufferings uh, mm. about their agony about their pain uh, the our half widows our people who have been tortured in different jails mm. Uh, mm. but unfortunately what we see uh, the indian government has blocked all their passports they don't allow any of the people to come mm. forward to go uh, abroad and to uh, speak in any of the events in at the international level one of the victims who could come out was uh, parvina hangar she came out and she uh, galvanized the whole support for the uh, in for the people who have been enforced to be disappeared by the indian forces uh, because her own son has uh, has been disappeared by the indian forces but uh, i can give you one example of this uh, we once uh, a girl from kashmir who 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 managed to travel to geneva to plead the case of her father who was disappeared but when she came back her uh, dent father was asked that to ask your daughter mm-hmm. not to go to uh, any more in search of his father otherwise uh, um, we will kill his two brothers they will be no more like uh, like her father so uh, there is a reprisal for anything which the kashmiri is reveal uh, yesterday i was reading a report uh, about that what happened in kashmir uh, mm-hmm. most recently and and an international uh, ngo article 14 they tried mm. to find find out the suppression which is going on in uh, indian occupied kashmir uh, they met a lot of people but people did not disclose their names only three people were able to spoke hundreds of people they had identified but only three people spoke uh, uh, and then they they also uh, were arrested they were put behind the bars for speaking to that ngo this is the problem that's why the victims voice is not coming out and that is not being directly heard but indirectly our our people who are uh, monitoring this uh, situation but they after do after we've also many, seen mashal speak this, out uh, you know talk about her own this. experience ji can you hear me hello aaj altaf sir we've also seen mashal malik speak out you know uh, she's obviously tried very hard to mobilize the international community about her husband also about her own cause and that is also you know something that we've seen the world react over if i'm yeah, not wrong yeah that's true mashal is uh, fortunately mashal is uh, currently she is not under the indian occupation she can speak but the victim mm. is directly affected yasin malik's uh, mother cannot speak yasin malik's sister cannot speak they are not mm. allowed to speak they are not allowed to meet the press they are not allowed to uh, say anything and like that the people who have been killed their mothers are not you you have uh, you have read a story mm. in the uh, washington post when athar was uh, uh, martyred and his mm. father then demanded the uh, body of his son and uh, mushtaq wani was uh, then he was framed under uapa why he was agitating for the, uh, and demanding the body of his son so this is the case that how the victims cannot come out they 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 have to then take uh, 
see they uh, mm. they have lost one member of the family but they don't mm. uh, they don't want that all the members of their family should fall into danger and likewise uh, now we have seen that uh, in the, our press in kashmir in uh, Indian occupied kashmir press they are not allowed to report any of the cases you have seen uh, dozens of journalists who are, mm. who are uh, under sedition charges and uh, mm. yesterday uh, washington post uh, washington based uh, um, cjp they reported that uh, the indian uh, the journalism in Indian occupied kashmir mm. at the verge of collapse and to mm. me it has already collapsed because mm. they are not allowed to report anything these are such things which the international media and international organizations are monitoring they are writing on it and unfortunately we see the india we have such a government in india which they have no shame they don't accept any of the recommendations from the human rights commissioner from the special reporters or the from world's largest human rights organizations if you go to the world's largest human rights or go to amnesty international human rights watch frontline and others you will see a whole of literature available uh, and evidence available on the indian war crimes in kashmir but let me ali raza saab overall uh, have you enough. seen they don't I accept any of the recommendations go to ali raza saab and then uh, we will uh, talk more about this Ji, Ali Raza sahab, you've seen overall, I hope you've been following, and I think that uh, Vani sahab is very right. He says that, you know, it's not always possible for the victims to come out and talk about their stories uh, because of, you know, the way that the, the media ban and the way that the region itself is controlled. Um, you know, a lot of the information that is unable to go out, that the, the real things, the way that they are happening, that's also... Uh, you know, tried. There's, it's clear that it's it's a control uh, by the Indian occupied forces. So that is going to be difficult for us. Um, what are other measures you feel we can take? I think uh, uh, one is have rightly said that it is uh, very difficult for the victims to come out and to speak. But I think uh, we we have to have the documentation of all these uh, cases. And then uh, the third parties, for example, the diaspora or the uh, APHC or other uh, uh, re uh, representative, they can present it to the international community. And then it is the duty of international community, for example, in, in European Union, if we have the, the, the case, documented case, cases, we can uh, present to the authorities here and they have to contact with the Indian government and if the India refuse it, they will see themselves that uh, uh, the, the, why the victims cannot come out. And they, uh, this uh, international crisis group, which is based here in Brussels also, they, they should a report last week. If you see the reports, they, they talked about uh, minorities, they talked about uh, uh, Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir, and what the security forces, the occupation forces are doing with the Kashmiris about the fake encounters. And they, they see that there is no hope. If the Modi's policy continue in this way, there is no hope for peace in that region. Mm. The, the European Union and the international community is interested in peace. And to convince them, I think we have to have the documentation of all the cases, whatever is happening there, and we have to present it to the international authorities. Right. See, Dr. Ves, in terms of documenting it and taking it, what about the role of the UN? Because sadly, we haven't seen the kind of reaction we would have liked to see from the international forum generally, or also UN in particular. Um, as far as the legal option is concerned, again, you know, do we agitate again within the UN also? You know, uh, this uh, documentation part and then, you know, our uh, mm. role in the United Nations. The first thing about documentation which uh, Vani Saab has raised, uh, recently, in the recent past, we have seen uh, very promising, very positive results. For example, that uh, our report, uh, The Structure of Violence, was uh, prepared by Khurram Parvez and his colleagues. And uh, this was based on the primary data. The, that mm -hmm. was an 800 pages document. And, uh, you know, the stories of victims and human rights violations. And what I believe is that two consecutive reports of United Nations Human Rights Councils uh, released in 2018 <coughs> and 2019, mm. they were largely based on that documentation. Okay. 
it was indeed very challenging it was very courageous thing mm. and as a result of that you can see that Khurram Parvez is in jail mm. under UAPA so uh, he is paying the cost but uh, ultimately we have seen uh, that it has uh, actually uh, led to it has had its effect yeah, There's it, no it, it, it has a, that, that effect so that is similarly <coughs> that, that was the based on the primary data mm. and I think it's similarly that I was talking about earlier the other underpinnings, intellectual underpinnings that we need to do, we need to build our document also. For example, one example that I can quote is that India always talks about that it's a bilateral issue after uh, Simla mm. Accord, mm. you know. Mm. In that Simla Accord, it's written mm. that uh, it does not uh, invalidate United Nations yeah. Security Council mm. resolutions. Mm. You know, uh, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, the impression is given that this mm. whole uh, agreement is mm. governed uh, by United Nations uh, principles and rules, mm. uh, but unfortunately we cannot project it that although it's a bilateral issue, but it has an international dimension and that is equally huh? relevant. Why, that is, that is, that is equally relevant, number two. Projection of it, what are some of the problems with projection in your right. opinion? Why haven't we been able to, like you say, project it? Mm. Because of course it's not a bilateral issue, of course it's a humanitarian issue, mm. of course we, we are seeing the violations, all of those things, and the world knows. Mm. But again, projection, uh, uh, media's it, involvement perhaps. Mm, yes, of, what, what I think is that one angle of it or one dimension of it that uh, we need to glorify it, we need to amplify our vo voice in the media, whatever okay. that we are producing mm. it. But my concern is that uh, the uh, plausibility of the argument, that is very important. It doesn't mean that the United Nations resolutions and whatever we are professing, we, whatever we are advocating, that is not, that is plausible, but mm. sometimes in the world stage it has become cliche. So mm. we need to come up with fresh arguments, okay. you know. So I think that these are the angles if we can work upon that, if we can explore it and if we can properly codify and properly document, then we can have some positive results, mm. you know, uh, in the international community and in the, from the international organization. And towards that you, you're saying that we need to be more organized. More organized, more productive. Uh, we need to be, means our intellectuals, our civil society, they need to uh, they need to be more productive, they need and, and, and there need to be a there need to be a coordination. Uh, earlier we were talking about the diaspora coordination. <coughs> we need to have a coordination in Pakistan as well. For example, that previous prime minister, uh, after the immediate martyrdom of 2016, Pakistani prime minister in United Nations General Assembly, very categorically mentioned and termed Burhanwani as a youth leader. Mm. You know. And similarly, in the recent tweet that you have mentioned earlier in the beginning of the program, mm. that Prime Minister also fully advocated, fully mm. extended its, uh, its support and Pakistan's support uh, mm. to this uh, struggle. Mm. So the, the thing is there, but we need to uh, bring um, coordination with all the stakeholders, whether it is intellectual, political, mm. military, civil society, so that our narrative uh, becomes more consolidated only then if we can uh, we can we can we can tell uh, and we can sell and we can project that mm -hmm. narrative i think it would be more plausible it would Gee, be more acceptable Altaf sahab your comments about um, how do we proceed within pakistan uh, for a more focused uh, you know approach towards the kashmiri cause more organized coordinated which is what uh, dr avais is saying yeah, it's uh, true that there sh should be more coordination and more efforts to the cause. Mm. Every government in Pakistan has done uh, uh, whatever they could do for the uh, cause of Kashmir at national and international level. But the political cohesion in Pakistan is the most uh, uh, thing which we need. That is political stability in Pakistan, though the mm. all parties have one voice on Kashmir, but that should be reflected in their position as, well as in the government when they speak about mm. Kashmir, they should not uh, blame each other for this. That's one of the things. Uh, when it comes to that in, at international level, you see, uh, I, I can tell you that I have been to the different place and different, uh, met different people at international level. At each and every level, there is realization. The people, uh, the people in power as well as the people in the intellectual uh, or academia or 
the civil society, they know what is happening to the people of Kashmir, how they have been forced to the wall, uh, mm. what is the Indian designs in Kashmir. Everybody realizes this and mm. they acknowledge it, but unfortunately they don't speak out. They don't speak out. The political governments don't speak out. Uh, then there comes their economic interest, there comes their strategical interest and all that. And for that purpose, we have to work hard in order to make the political government realize that they have a burden uh, at their end, they, that it, these resolutions which are on Kashmir, they have been passed by their uh, insisters, and that is mm -hmm. why uh, this uh, Kashmir, Kashmir dispute is there, and the, the lives of Kashmiris which, uh, which are being consumed by this conflict, they all have a blame of that because they have not uh, pursued those resolutions which were passed in past by the UN Security Council, which were agreed by all three five members at that time. So I think the responsibility is at political level. We have to uh, do more at that level. And uh, that's the only way to move forward to make Pakistan uh, as strong uh, politically as well as economically in order to make our point at international level. Ji, um, Ali Raza Sayyid Saab, if you can add any measures you feel we can take within Pakistan also. I think I think the the first and the utmost is that uh, we have to have a uh, a long term strategy and a, a clear uh, narrative which is supported by our actions and uh, for that reason I, I think in in Kashmir Azad Kashmir or in Pakistan we have to create the think tanks where the different voices should be heard and come up with the new ideas and then the the narrative you know we have to learn the lessons of past also why our narrative was not accepted as it should be so uh, these are the the things which we have to uh, uh, clearly check and move forward and bring the the youth in front and the youth of the kashmir and with the new ideas and the new strategies with the new changing world because uh, whatever we have before uh, maybe it is not uh, uh, relevant in the in new situation so that is very important that uh, with the time we have to change the strategies our goal is the same right mm -hmm. to self-determination and the stop the human rights violation but the strategies should you're be you're saying the approach uh, needs to be more aligned with how things are now more modern yeah. Uh, more yeah. cohesive, so to speak. Thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Aves uh, bin Wasi. Thank you for joining us. Altaf Hussain Mani Saab, thank you for being with us. Ali Raza Sayyid, thank you for joining us. Um, of course, as far as, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, it's a very sad occasion, Burhan Wani's death anniversary. Uh, the Kashmiri cause is very close to Pakistani's hearts. Uh, you know, all Muslims uh, are appalled uh, at the barbar you know, uh, barbaric treatment of their Muslim brethren in occupied Kashmir. We've also talked about some of the areas where we can regroup as far as a cohesive, more organized, structural approach is concerned towards the Kashmiri cause. As far as, of course, we've seen uh, the government has rallied behind the Kashmiri's cause. The Prime Minister talked about it, uh, you know, in his tweet also he mentioned that it is, uh, you know, a very uh, sad occasion as far as Burhan Bani's death anniversary is concerned and Pakistan is committed to the Kashmiri cause like never before. Uh, let's hope the world can see uh, the barbaric treatment, can acknowledge it and perhaps uh, there can be a change um, in the brutality currently in practice in Pakistan. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.